Welcome to the Reporting in K2 Standard Reporting in K2 Workspace tutorial. Here in part one, let's pause briefly to run through a little prerequisite knowledge about K2 Workspace before we get started with the tutorial exercises. K2 Workspace is the primary administration and reporting tool for K2 Black Pearl installations. From the management console, you can determine the current version of deployed workflows, set workflow permissions or process rights, start and stop process instances and redirect them to another user if necessary. All workflows, whether built in K2 Designer, K2 Studio, or K2 Visual Studio, can be managed from K2 Workspace. Before you begin this tutorial, you will need to make sure you have the correct permissions in K2 Workspace to view reports and make changes to custom reports later on. Please review the notes section in the documentation for part one of this tutorial for more information on K2 base permissions. You will need either view, view participate, or admin level permissions. Quickly, view gives you the ability to run reports against all instances of a workflow. View participate allows you to only run reports on workflows where you are the originator or have action to user task. Admin gives you access to the K2 management console and the ability to assign workflow permissions and much more. If you are in your own environment, talk with your K2 administrator to see which permissions can be granted to you for this tutorial. In step one, we will present an overview with the basic navigation options of the management console and K2 workspace. We will also take a look at the process rights for our leave request workflow example that was built from the viewpoint of the leave request extended tutorial. If you are on a K2 supplied virtual machine, you already have the permissions necessary to continue on with this tutorial. If you're in your own environment, you will need K2 admin rights to get into the management section of the K2 workspace. Now, if you're also familiar with the management console, specifically looking at process rights for a workflow process, feel free to move on to step two of this tutorial. Let's get started by launching K2 Workspace. Again, if you're on a K2 VM, you can do this by going down to Start, All Programs, select K2 Black Pearl, and then select K2 Black Pearl Workspace. While this loads up, if you're in your own environment, you may need to get the URL to your organization's workspace site if you don't have K2 applications installed on your local machine. Now that the page has loaded, let's review the following sections of the landing page. The Home Page button up here on the left will always bring you back to this page with the K2 work list on it. The menu bar across the top to the right of the Home Page button provides access to various sections within Workspace, such as Custom Reports, the Management Console, Notification Events, Security, and User Settings. The Reports Console menu here on the right will be what we're concerned with later on in this tutorial. These are the five standard reports available to you out of the box for basic reporting against K2 workflows. Finally, over here in the middle, we have the work list for the current user. If there are any process instances waiting to be actioned by the current user, in my case, it's the Denalix administrator, they are listed here. You can see that the administrator account has one process instance waiting to be actioned. Let's move on. Hover your mouse over the Management menu button here at the top of the page on the menu bar and then click Management Console. We'll give this a few seconds to open up. At the top of the K2 management tree over here on the left, your server name may be different than what's shown on my screen. Either way, expand the K2 server tree from here, then expand Workflow Server, Processes, Workflows, and open up the Leave Request Workflow. This is the Leave Request Workflow that was deployed as part of the Leave Request Extended Tutorial. However, if you don't have this workflow deployed in your environment, open up another workflow. Notice the workflow server options for the leave request workflow process. The first five options here are common to all workflows. Let's discuss them briefly. First, process rights give you the ability to assign workflow permissions to a process. These options are the following. Admin level rights provides full control over the process. This should not be confused with admin server rights where the user has full control in K2 Workspace. Start allows users to start a workflow, but keep in mind that without start or greater permissions, 
Users are likely to get an error when they submit a form, so they at least need to have this level of access if they are to participate in a given workflow. The view level permission gives users the ability to at most view, run, and create reports for this process. And finally, view participate allows users to view standard reports for workflow instances they started under this particular workflow or where they completed a task under it. Let's talk about the instances section now. In this section, we get to view running instances of the current process. This option gives you an overview of how many process instances are currently running for this workflow, as well as those that are in an error state. Moving on to versions. By default, K2 makes the most recently deployed workflow version the default version to start new workflow instances against in your applications. You can change the default workflow version to another version if desired, or even delete specific or all versions of a workflow from K2 under the versions menu option. Keep in mind as well, when running reports, you will have the option of changing the workflow version you want to report against. Next, let's look at the string table. This shows the K2 Black Pearl reference strings used by your K2 environment. It gives you a way to edit and manage connection strings, URL locations, and any other types of configurable values you need to reference so you don't have to hard code configuration settings. For example, you can manage configuration settings pointing to various platforms like your CRM environment or Exchange server. Let's look at another area of security called roles. Roles are predefined groups of users and are initially created globally, but can then be added to a specific workflow if desired. For example, you might create roles called finance approvers or human resources approvers, then assign a user task within a workflow to the human resources approvers role, instead of assigning that task to one or more individual user accounts directly. In this exercise for security, we will just be looking at the process rights option for a workflow and in my case, the leave request workflow again. Click on the process rights menu option for your workflow. And notice on this screen, we have the ability to add users or groups to this workflow and then select desired rights via the checkboxes next to the user or group name. With start level rights, all domain users can start this leave request workflow process. View gives them access to run standard and custom reports. The view participate option would be basically a view only option and only allows users to view standard reports for the workflow instances they started or where they completed a task. Typically, most select either view or view participate here, but not both. And in most cases, the view option is selected. If you don't want users to have access to reports, simply remove the view option by deselecting it and clicking save. Let's do that here for the domain users group for demonstration purposes. I'll go ahead and click save now, and that's all we're going to look at. So when you're ready, click back on the home icon in the upper left to return to the K2 Workspace landing page. In step one review, we took a brief look at the management console, specifically the process rights for the leave request workflow process. This information is important to know because you will use process rights to grant users the ability to view, run, and create standard and custom reports. If you do not want your users accessing reports, confirm their only process right is the start option. This will allow them to submit a form that in turn starts a workflow, but not access the reports for that workflow. In the next several steps, we will learn more about three of the standard K2 reports and how you might use them for analyzing and monitoring your processes. The first report we are going to work with here in step two is the activity statistics report. Starting from the K2 workspace landing page, select the activity statistics report link in the reports pane over here on the left side. Now, this may take a minute or so for the report to open if it's the first time you've opened it today. Feel free to pause the video here if necessary. On the first page of this report, when it opens up, you will find a list of all processes that have been deployed. This high-level overview also indicates the number of instances that have been started for each process, and the number of instances includes processes that are active and non-active. Select the Leave Request Workflow process name to open that report. If you don't see that in your list, you can open up basically any workflow report that you want. This report will open using the system default filters if you've never hit it before, or it persists with your last configuration of parameters and filters if you made changes to them. Now let's select the configuration link. For our first report, we want to see which tasks take the longest to complete compared to the other tasks in the process. 
When your report configuration screen opens up, it will land on the parameters page. This is where you can narrow down the results returned by specifying parameters, filters, and deleted process settings for the process instance you're reporting on. For more detail on what each parameter does here, please review the learning guide documentation for step two of this tutorial. However, I will quickly touch on each one here. The process version parameter allows you to select which deployed process version you want the report to display information about. When viewing this information, you can also use the date range parameter to narrow down the reporting timeframe such as this week, last 90 days, or even a specific date range. Under Options, enabling Exclude Server Events allows you to remove server events like Send Email and Data Update events in your workflow from the Report view. You may want to exclude these types of events if you have too many events in a workflow that will take up a lot of space on the generated report. Now down here for Status, you can select a Process Instance status such as Active, Completed, Expired, or Waiting. With value type, you can decide if you'd like to see the chart show average duration or number of instances. Average duration will calculate the average time a task takes over your date range, and the number of instances displays the total number of process instances for the selected status. You also get the option to select chart types like area, bar, column, or pie charts, and they can be in 2D or three-dimensional format. Moving over to the filter tab, in this tab, you can further define your reporting results by applying filters to the activity name, duration, full name, or instance values for workflow instances. Use this if you want to review active process instances that have been running for longer than one day, for example. Finally, on the Settings tab for this particular report, you can select whether you want to include deleted or removed process instances in your report. The default here is set to true, but if you only want to show report data for active and completed instances, you should set this value to false. Let's go back to the parameters tab now and set the options as follows. For process version, you can select the version that you want to report on. For the leave request extended process, you may only have one choice. In my case, I'll leave it set to version 4, which is the highest version I have, or the latest version in other words. For my date range, I'm going to select specific date range and then make sure the from value is at least two to three weeks back. Actually, I'll go a month or so back. You can do this if you need to go back farther. This will be dependent on how long ago you built the leave request extended application and submitted test processes. Adjust the dates so that they encompass the time frame around building and testing your application. Then I'll just leave the two dates set to the day of this video's recording. Under Options, let's make sure Exclude Server Events is unchecked. And then for Status, I'm going to select Completed. For Value Type, set it to Average Duration. And then for Chart Type, select Column, and then I'll just leave 3D unchecked. We won't need to specify any filters or deleted process settings at this point, so you can click OK when you're ready. While your chart will not look exactly like mine here, you should see a representation of a chart with the user task called Manager Approval, the Rework Request task, and possibly some other system tasks. As you can see, the system tasks are processed very quickly, but notice the average time it takes for the Manager Approval task. Remember, I'm using a test application here, but for example, if you had an average of a little more than 10 minutes for the Management Approval to be completed, you'd be pretty good in your environment. However, in this example, we are looking at approximately five days for the manager approval task, which may be a bit too long for some. To address this problem, you might look at the complexity of the task and see if the communication around the task could be made clearer. Another option to consider is to add an escalation to the task. Escalations can be as simple as sending an email reminder of the unfinished task to the recipient, or they can be more complex where the task is automatically redirected to another user. Let's take a look at another configuration of this report. If you'd like to go back and see if there are any activity instances still active after two days, we can do this by going back to the report configuration and change the parameter and filter options. So go back up to the configuration setting, and under parameters, put a check in exclude server events. Then for status, select active. For value type, let's change it to number of instances. And now let's switch over to the Filter tab and click the Add button. Under here, select the Duration field name, 
and then select greater than for the compare operator. And then we want two days as the value. To do that, put a 0, 2 for the leftmost double zero group shown here, and then click OK when you're ready. Now, in the chart returned, we see there are at least two instances running longer than two days. Again, your results may not be the same as mine. Also notice here that in this report, we do not see any system tasks. Remember, this is because we selected the option to exclude server events. And that's all we need to do for step two, so let's have a quick review. The activity statistics report is very useful for displaying duration-related statistics on individual activities, in other words, events or steps in your workflow. Use this report to show bottlenecks, which tasks are taking longer than others, or which tasks are running longer than desired. You can also use this report to show the number of instances that have been processed in a given time period. In step three, we will look at one of the most widely used reports, the process overview report, which allows you to view the details of events or steps in a process instance. In the reports pane over on the left, click on the process overview link to open up this report. When this report opens up, you should see a list of all the processes that have been deployed in your environment. This list indicates the number of instances for each process. That also includes active and completed instances. You can also see an average duration for the process. Now let's click on the leave request workflow process name. Again, if you don't see this on your list, select any process that you have available. When the process overview process instances screen opens up, you should see a list of all leave request workflows that have been submitted in your environment. Notice the process folio column. Now remember, in my list here, all of these are demos and tests, but recall that we assign the leave request title as the folio, which helps provide a unique identifier when you combine it along with the originator name in this column for each process instance. The status column tells us if the process is still active or has been completed. The start date and duration give us an idea of how long this process has been running if it's active or how long it ran if it's completed. One other thing to look at, notice that each process instance has a ViewFlow icon here to the left this will actually take us over to the ViewFlow report for this workflow instance. We'll actually take a look at this in the next step of this tutorial. Let's click on a process folio name for one of the process instances that is completed in this list. I'll select June Vacation from my list, which happened to be submitted by Anthony. Now keep a mental note of the process instance you are opening. We are going to open the same process in the Part 2 ViewFlow section of this tutorial, so that we can observe the same process instance details in a flowchart format. Now that this page is open, notice the activity name column. Some of these are the events put in place for completing the workflow if the manager approved the request. We do know this request was approved because of the set status approved activity shown. If the request had been rejected, the activity would be the set status rejected activity. Notice also that you can view when each step began and ended here and the time it took to complete that step. Let's drill down a little deeper into the manager approval activity. You can click on the manager approval activity name right here on the list. These are going to be the final details for the manager approval step. And here it shows that the Denalix administrator actually approved the request. In my example, on my virtual machine, we know that Anthony was the form originator, and from that, we also know that the Denalix administrator is not Anthony's manager. So, in this case, we want to find out why the administrator approved the request and not Anthony's manager, which is Bob. One way to do this is to review the audit trail for this step. Click on the audit link just above the report information. Now, we are looking at the fine details for the manager approval step, if there were any deviations from the normal path, they would show up here. And indeed, we can see that the manager approval task was redirected from Bob to the Denalix administrator. The username column shows us the user that did the task redirection. One last feature to mention that is very useful is the ability to export reports into Excel or as a PDF file. If using Excel, this would allow you to compile reports from multiple processes into one worksheet. It also creates a format that you can easily share with others, so keep in mind, most standard reports can be exported to Excel and PDF file formats. I'll demonstrate how to do this. Let's use the previous button to return to the activity instances screen. I'll give you a few seconds to do this.
And then from here, you can select Excel from the Export drop-down options in the Tools bar up here at the top and click Export. Your web browser may ask if you want to open the exported Excel file down here at the bottom of the page. Click Open for now. This may also take a few seconds if you're on a K2 supplied virtual machine. We can close the activation message that pops up for Excel, and there we can see our report has been exported to Excel where we can work with the data as needed. Feel free to close Excel when you're ready to move on. We have just reviewed the details for a process instance that has been completed. In the next few tasks, we will look at a process instance that is still active. This will tell us what event or step the workflow is currently on and how long it's been sitting there. Using the green previous arrow, make your way back to the process instances for the leave request workflow. Then click on any process instance that shows an active status. I'll click on the one that says study in Luxembourg. In the process instance that I've selected, we can see that the first system task, set status submitted, has actually completed. Then the next task, manager approval, is still waiting to be actioned. If we click on the manager approval title to view the details, we can see that Jono is the destination user and the duration has been running for a little over one day. Make a note that this view is going to be very helpful when you want to look at why some processes may run a period going into multiple days. And that's it for step three, so let's do a quick review. In this step, we explored the process overview report and learned how we can drill down into process instances and activity instances to get a very complete picture of the workflow and its status. The process overview landing page gives a high level view of each process instance in your environment displaying the current status, whether it's active or completed in our example, the starting date and finish date if completed, and the duration. With this report, we are able to drill down into the activity instances to view the status of each event or step within the workflow process. Using the audit feature, we can determine if any additional steps occurred, such as a task being redirected. Viewing an active process instance shows us the current event or step for the process. Remember, we can also export report content to Excel or as a PDF file. This is for distribution or for further compilation of reporting data. In step four, we will take a look at the user performance report. This report shows either the number of instances or the duration for a single activity instance of a process per user. This graphical report can be useful for determining workload or training needs if a user consistently takes longer to complete the same task compared to other users. For our first report, we want to see how long, on average, it takes our users to complete the manager approval task. Up front, I want to remind you that your results again may be different based on the data in your system. Let's go ahead and select the user performance report from the bottom of the reports menu on the left side of the page. Now, on the landing page, select the Leave Request Workflow Process, and when your default chart opens up, open the Report Configuration Editor from the top menu and change the following parameters. For Activity, make sure it's set to Manager Approval if it isn't already, and then for the Date Range, you can select Last 7 Days, Last Month, or actually any range that would contain completed processes in your environment. For mine, I'll select Last 90 Days at this point. And then for value type, make sure it says average duration. And for the chart type, you can set it to any type you'd like, but I'm going to set mine to bar. Feel free to play with these settings as you see fit. You don't necessarily have to follow me exactly. We won't add any filters, so you can click OK to regenerate the report. After this report gets generated, we can see a comparison of the manager approval task average times for three users. I have John, Bob, and the administrator. When using this report as a tool, points you may want to consider are workload consistency between users, acceptable completion times versus unacceptable completion times. Keep in mind to ask yourself if you have a standard to throw this up against for your processes. Now, also consider do we need user training for completing the task if there are bottlenecks? And could we add in escalations such as reminders or redirection for the task if it's taking way too long? For the next report, we want to see how the workload is spread out among the three users. This report will tell us the number of manager approval tasks each user has completed within the given time frame. Once again, open the report configuration editor at the top. 
and change the value type to number of instances. And then for this chart, we're going to use a pie chart type and you can set 3D for the format. Go ahead and click OK to rerun the report. And now we can see the view distribution of manager approval tasks for our three users. Let's consider this chart using a help desk scenario where requests are assigned to a group of your help desk department staff, who in turn take ownership of tasks and complete them. Now in that scenario, we may want to consider why is one user completing more tasks than the others? Is this a performance issue or a training issue? And do the other users have workloads that are preventing them from taking ownership of tasks? And that'll do it for the user performance report, so keep much of that in mind as you use it. This user performance report gives us an overview of task assignments and user volume performance. In the real world, this report would be a starting point for analyzing a number of workplace factors, including workload, training or knowledge, performance, time management, and much more. This concludes part one around the K2 Workspace standard reports. When you are ready, continue on to part two for the ViewFlow, where we will actually take some time to work with the ViewFlow report.